while hunting one day in the dense woods. A man unexpectedly encountered a menacing bear. The situation was dire. And the man's subsequent actions would determine his fate. A year later. In a snug village nestled in Wyoming. Resided a close-knit family consisting of a man. His wife, and their endearing young son named John. The father. Well regarded as the town's skilled doctor. Had garnered renown for his adept. Use of herbal remedies to cure ailments. His reputation drew patients from afar seeking his expertise. Often referred to as healing hands. Due to the positive outcomes that. Consistently followed visits to his residence. John, as a child. Idolized his father and aspired to follow in his healing footsteps. Throughout his youth. He remained at his father's side. Imbibing knowledge and offering assistance whenever possible. Upon reaching the age of 17. John's life took a somber turn. As his father fell prey to an enigmatic illness. Despite their combined experience and wisdom. Their efforts to combat the ailment proved futile. And his father's condition worsened over. A disheartening span of two weeks. Ultimately. John's father succumbed to the illness. Leaving John engulfed in a maelstrom of anguish and resentment. The loss shook him to the core. Causing him to abandon his aspirations of. Emulating his father's medical prowess. The bitterness of his father's passing led John to question. The very purpose of his aspirations. The once unshakable faith in his abilities had crumbled. With his father's absence casting a long shadow. Over his confidence and determination. John discovered solace in strolling through the woods. Finding therapeutic refuge within nature's embrace. One winter day. Overwhelmed by inner turmoil. He sought respite amidst the trees. This had always been his method for taming restlessness. Venturing into the woods. Either to engage in hunting or simply. To immerse himself in the natural world. On this particular day. However, just as he reached the forest's edge. John realized the unfortunate timing of his excursion. A guttural growl pierced the air. Unsettlingly close to where he stood. Looking in the direction of the sound. He encountered the imposing figure of a massive bear. Though its initial appearance exuded menace. John discerned an underlying anomaly in the creature's demeanor. Labored breaths and plaintive vocalizations hinted at distress. And his gaze was drawn to a fresh wound above the bear's left eye. In an instant, realization dawned upon him. The bear was in a critical state, having been attacked by another creature. The gravity of the situation deepened as he grasped the truth. The bear was not just wounded. She was pregnant and undergoing labor. Despite the instinct to retreat, time was not on John's side. His gaze met the bear's. Her pain-laden growls reverberating in the air. Beneath those dark eyes, he sensed a flicker of intelligence, a plea for assistance. Braving the inner cacophony of fear and alarm, John recognized a connection, an unspoken bond forming between them. He comprehended that he couldn't leave the bear in this dire condition. Drawing on his prior experiences in aiding animals during labor, John suppressed his apprehension and approached the distressed creature. Every nerve within him screamed of danger. Yet he pressed forward. Over the next moments, a unique communion unfolded, intense, surreal, and fraught with tension. These fleeting minutes etched themselves as some of the most surreal and charged moments in John's life. With his courage intact, John skillfully aided the bear in delivering her cubs. A perplexing complication had caused the bear's distress. 
explaining her intense agony and urgent need for help. John's resourcefulness extended beyond childbirth, he carefully prepared herbal remedies to tend to the bear's injured eye. Despite the initial terror of the encounter, the bear's demeanor surprised him. She remained astonishingly composed and directed a gaze of gratitude towards John, fearing a potential backlash after his intervention. John's heart raced with uncertainty. However, the bear's response defied his concerns. She gently cradled her offspring, casting one last appreciative glance at John before departing. Aware that their paths were unlikely to intersect again, John recognized the rarity of this moment. A secret bond forged between man and beast. As he made his way home that night, a palpable sense of happiness enveloped John, his encounter with the bear had reignited a dormant spark within him. A passion for aiding others. He recognized the error of his previous decision. To abandon his healing aspirations. Urgency propelled him to share this newfound conviction with his mother, though he understood the incredulity his story might evoke. Despite her initial confusion, his mother sensed a change in him and was grateful for the mystical bear's role in revitalizing her son's spirit. Unbeknownst to her, the bear's impact was far from over. In the subsequent days, John revisited the location where their extraordinary interaction had transpired. While the bear was absent, he wished for her safety and the well-being of her cubs. He cherished the memory, a testament to the rejuvenation of his empathetic nature, and hoped that wherever she was, the bear and her cubs were thriving and unharmed, shielded from the dangers of the wild. Although fully aware that their paths would never cross anew, John resolved to carry the memory of the bear close to his heart, treasuring it indefinitely as a beacon of his rediscovery. Life progressed for John in a positive trajectory. Founding his own medical practice within the village marked a pivotal step. The community enthusiastically welcomed his return to his healing role, showering him with visits and tokens of support at his new establishment. Flourishing once more, he entered a joyous union with Brenda, his childhood friend and cherished companion. Even as his practice flourished and occupied much of his time, John remained faithful to his commitment. To bask in the soothing embrace of the woods, nature continued to be his refuge, a realm where he could reconnect with tranquility amidst the demands of life. However, News heralded an impending harsh winter, punctuated by blizzards that would soon render his woodland retreat inaccessible. Faced with the impending loss of his calming sanctuary, John made a resolute decision to venture into the woods one final time before the wintry grip took hold. The woods, shrouded in fading light, held an air of desolation. Most animals had sought refuge from the impending cold, leaving the surroundings eerily quiet. John's contemplations led him astray, and he stumbled, plunging headlong into a deep ditch. The dimness obscured a jutting rock that had caused his fall. Attempting to rise, searing pain shot through his leg, as he realized his ankle had twisted badly upon impact. Desperation compelled him to call for assistance. But an agonizing truth settled in, his cries, though raw and fervent, could unwittingly summon nearby predators. Despite his predicament, John persisted in shouting for help. Hours passed. His voice grew hoarse. And hope waned. Far removed from civilization. His prospects dwindled as night's chill gnawed at him, exacerbating his pain. Frustration mingled with resignation. As he grappled with the dire circumstances that enveloped him, despite donning relatively warm attire, 
John's jacket and boots offered scant protection against the biting cold and the dampness of the ground beneath him. Gradually, the grip of consciousness slipped as he wrestled with exhaustion. Abruptly, a resounding thud from a distance jolted him awake. The ominous thuds grew louder, drawing nearer with each echoing step. Dread gripped him as he recognized the truth. An apex predator had honed in on his vulnerable state. Imminent danger loomed as he comprehended that. In this condition, he was a veritable feast for any wild predator. John's thoughts raced to Brenda, his beloved wife, and his mother. The heartache they would endure upon discovering his fate. Just hours after his promise to return, weighed heavily on him. Panic escalated within him, as the footfalls of an immense creature reverberated through the air. Dread surged as he locked eyes with a formidable black bear. Its predatory gaze fixed upon him, a chilling reminder of his vulnerability. The precipice of danger drew nearer, poised to befall him, when an unforeseen intervention disrupted the imminent threat. A colossal figure hurtled into view. Forcefully driving the black bear away from John's immediate vicinity, the forest erupted into a cacophony of growls and tumultuous struggle. Minutes stretched as the battle raged, only to be followed by an eerie stillness that settled over the woods. John's heart raced within his chest as he observed the aftermath. His senses heightened. His gaze drawn to a new presence emerging from the shadows. Before him stood a grizzled bear, marked by an old scar etched across its eye. A poignant detail that triggered a jolt of recognition in John's mind. This was no ordinary bear. It was the very bear he had once helped in a time of need. The same bear that had rekindled his sense of purpose. The bear, once a recipient of his aid, had now reciprocated, demonstrating an unexpected interconnection between their fates. Staring into the bear's gaze, a mix of awe and gratitude swept over John, further deepening the enigmatic bond that fate had woven between them. John's heart raced as recognition dawned upon him. The grizzled bear before him was the very same one he had aided months ago. The mother bear, accompanied by her two smaller cubs, the ones he had assisted in delivering, ventured into the ditch. Sniffing curiously at him, she suddenly began licking his face. Fear and wonder mingled within John as he pondered. Whether the bear recognized him, or if this was to be his final encounter before becoming her meal. A quick realization swept over him. As the bear clamped onto his collar with her teeth, effortlessly lifting him out of the ditch, and placing him a short distance, Away from the now motionless black bear, close inspection confirmed the miracle. The grizzled bear was the same bear from that fateful day. John's senses danced between disbelief and gratitude. The bear nudged him, facilitating his attempts to rise, drawing strength from her presence. John leaned upon her for support, embarking on a gradual journey out of the woods the two cubs following in tow. As the boundary of the woods neared, an unexpected turn of events awaited. Instead of bidding him farewell and vanishing into the wilderness, the bear guided him towards his home. There, his wife and mother, concerned and waiting, initially recoiled at the sight of the three bears. Yet, John's account unraveled the truth and his mother, vindicated in her son's claims, realized the astonishing reality of their connection. The bear's departure, along with her cubs, marked the tale's conclusion. It was an extraordinary narrative, destined to be recounted across generations, an emblem of unity between man and nature. A blend of awe and fondness pervaded the air. As they watched the bear family retreat into the woods one last time, 
For John. This was a transformative and defining chapter of his life. A testament to the power of unexpected connections and the enduring imprint of kindness. What do you think of this amazing story? Subscribe to our channel for more inspiring videos and stories like this one. Hit the like button and leave a comment if you enjoyed watching this video. Hello everyone. Today we will tell you an incredible story about how a little boy rescued and adopted a little wolf cub. A few years later, the little wolf cub repays the little boy's life-saving grace. And it also saves the little boy's life. In a village not far from forest, a little boy lives with his mother. One day, when a little boy was playing with his friends at the edge of the forest, he saw a wolf in the bushes. The little wolf whimpered and seemed unable to walk. Looking closer, the little boy found that the little wolf's paw was injured. So he couldn't move normally. So the little boy picked up the little wolf and took him home. Son, what did you bring home? The little boy's mother shouted to him, if it's a kitten or a dog. I'll take it to the farm now and let it live there. You take it every day. Small animals from the street are brought home. Why is that? Mom, look quickly. He is very good looking. His mother walked up to him and saw a little gray thing in his arms. She asked in surprise. What is this? It looks like a puppy. This is a little wolf cub. Look how cute it is, said the little boy. My friends and I found it when we were playing in the forest. Its paw was injured. It was obviously it was stolen out of the forest. My child. Are you crazy? The woman named Anna looked at her son. And the little wolf in fear. This is a beast. Why did you bring it back? Send it back quickly. Mama, please let him stay with us until his paw is healed. He sits alone in the bushes with no relatives. And no way of living alone. The little boy said. If you agree. I promise to help you clean the house and wash the dishes. It's unbelievable that you would promise to help me with the housework. Well, I can't object now. I'll keep your little wolf at home. And he can live in the barn. Anna said. Did you tell the forest ranger about your new pet? I haven't yet. The little boy said, Mom. Don't tell him, please. He will definitely be angry because I brought the little wolf out of the forest. And he will definitely take the little wolf away. He doesn't like it being taken away. The animal is brought out of the forest. How can I leave the little wolf in the forest? What if something happens to him? He is still limping. Poor little guy. And the mother wolf is not with him. That's why it got lost. Then what are you going to call it? I don't know yet, maybe the name Jack suits it well. His mother walked into the house with a smile, very well. Let's call it Jack. Since then. Jack has lived with the boy. They have become best friends. And never leave each other even for a minute. Whenever he sees the little boy. There will always be a little wolf by his side. The whole village already knew that. A wolf had taken up residence in a family. When the forest ranger also knew about it. He found the little boy. Asked how the little wolf got here and made the little boy promise that when the little wolf's claws healed. He would let him return to the forest. The little boy also knew that. One day he would be separated from Jack. As time passed, Jack grew up. And the relationship between the boy and him gradually became closer. The boy's neighbors would always come to joke that. The wolf would run into the forest and forget his savior. No, it's impossible. Jack will definitely remember me. We are like brothers. See how much he loves me. Jack is my most loyal friend, said the little boy. 
It doesn't love you. It loves the food. Bones and meat you give him. Anyway these animals are stupid. And you are too. To trust the loyalty of the wolf. Once Jack is back in the forest. He will immediately forget about you. Just howl at the moon every day. The little boy's neighbors laughed at him for a long time. But the boy ignored them because he believed that. Jack was his most loyal friend and would never betray him. A year later. Jack grew up and became a strong wolf. Every day. The boy and his mother realized that. They will soon be separated from Jack. The wolf also kept looking towards the forest. Expressing that he was very interested in the world behind the fence. The mother tried to explain to her son. It's time to say goodbye to Jack, my son, don't worry. Jack is a mature wolf. His wounds are almost healed. And he can live alone without you. You are a caring child. You rescued a wolf pup and raised him with your own care and love. Let's open the door and see what he does. Mom, Jack will leave. He has been watching for a month. I know the forest is his home. There is very little space here. And he has no relatives. Hearing what his mother said. Tears flowed down his cheeks. He walked up to Jack, hugged it. And whispered in its ear that he loved it very, very much. Jack licked his cheek and whimpered. The boy opened the gate to the yard, Jack. You are going to the forest. You are free. The wolf looked at the boy. Then at the gate. And walked towards the forest hesitantly. Goodbye, Jack, the boy cried and whispered. Jack turned, took one last look and disappeared into the bushes. After that day, the boy never saw Jack again. Every night he sat on the steps of the house and waited for Jack. But Jack never came back. Years passed and the boy grew up into a handsome young man. People around were amazed that the little boy could grow into such a handsome young man. One day, the young man walked into the forest where he often went alone where he felt very free, away from human society and close to nature. After walking a few miles along familiar roads, he decided to turn back. Suddenly he heard the sound of a branch snapping, thinking maybe it was an elk or a wild boar. He didn't know what animal could make such a loud sound of breaking a branch. He was walking towards a big tree, and suddenly he saw a bear coming out of the bushes. It was a huge brown bear. The bear looked at him angrily and roared. The young man panicked, what should I do? He had never encountered such a big carnivore. And he was very afraid that he would die here. If the bear jumps over in the next second, he is finished. He closed his eyes, already preparing for the worst in his heart. Suddenly, he heard a wolf growl, opened his eyes, and saw a gray wolf standing between him and the bear. My God, it's Jack. The boy immediately recognized the wolf walking around the brown bear as Jack. The wolf growled louder and louder at the bear. And the bear tried to get rid of the wolf. But when he knew he couldn't, he decided to run away. Obviously the bear is still young. Or the wolf is too experienced. Jack. My faithful Jack. The young man knelt down and held out his hand. And the wolf came towards him. Thank you Jack, my true friend. Suddenly. Another wolf howled in the distance. Jack turned his back and ran towards the direction of the howling. Apparently it was a she-wolf. Looking at Jack. The young man's tears flowed down his cheeks like when he was a child. Jack has not forgotten me. He can think of me as a friend. And he will risk his life to save me. 
I am not afraid of bears at all because of the loyalty of wolves. After Jack returned home, he immediately told his story to his friend. The one who says that all animals are stupid, and that it is foolish to believe in the loyalty of wolves. Of course. He was also very shocked. But when it comes to Jack, he still respects him very much. This is the whole incredible story that happened. Between the little wolf and the little boy. If you like this story, please share it with your friends and like it. Thank you for watching, goodbye.